about cars, a podcast for car enthusiasts and the people who love them. Hello, my friends. This is Mickey Desai, your host and producer of The Thing About Cars. I've got a very exciting announcement for you. You may remember that special conversation we had with Warren Jobs. He's the CEO of Sealskin Covers. Well, guess what? We're going to actually give away a sealskin cover to one lucky listener of The Thing About Cars. At the end of this episode, I'll tell you how to enter to win the sealskin cover. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy this episode of The Thing About Cars. Hello again. Welcome, my friends. This is Mickey Desai, one of your hosts for The Thing About Cars, sitting here in Strongbox West in the somewhat damp city of Atlanta today. Around the table, we've got Ben, Ronnie. Becca. And uh, a full agenda again for us today. I, I wrote down something that a friend of mine had said via my Facebook page, but but I'm, I'm trying to stick to a certain structure for the show. And so we're going to start with the Grand Trivia Auto Trivia question of the day. I'm, I'm sure Ronnie's going to know this one and he may even blurt it right out, in which case we'll go to the second trivia section. But, <laughs> but the trivia question for the day is, tires are labeled with a long combination of letters and numbers like p215 slash 65 r15 89 h what does that last letter in this example h refer to does it does it refer to optimal operating temperature does it refer to the highest safe speed does it refer to maximum vehicle weight or to fully inflated tire weight should we just answer it now and go on to a better question for the rest of the show or you just want to what do you want to do i mean I think everyone around the table knows the answer. Everyone at the question. table, I'm yeah. sure, knows the <laughs> yeah. answer. But go ahead, go for it, Ronnie. It's it's your speed rating. That's right. It's the highest uh-huh. safe speed rating. Yeah. The letter rating, i.e., WZZR, others refers to the maximum safe speed tires are capable of. But but so what are the ratings, and what should the average consumer look for for their daily always go drivers? for Z. Always go for Z. Well, <laughs> H H is considered standard middle of the road average person. You're not a race car driver. You're not driving a big old pickup or off road or Z Z is something that he and I would probably use. That's for your sports cars, muscle cars. If you're going to be, I probably wouldn't put a Z tire on a pickup truck. Um, what Not about with that attitude? <laughs> <laughs> what are they? The ZR1 pickups or a, a Rumblebee? Which, by the way, I just love that it's called a Rumblebee. Rumblebee. Good I love God. that. <laughs> but so, is does it generally speaking that the higher number, the the letter, the higher speed it can handle? Uh, not necessarily, because Y is actually the highest speed rating you can get. Oh. Um, y is for exotic sports cars. It is rated to 300 kilometers an hour. Uh, if you have a Y in parentheses, it makes it look like boobies, but it's also <laughs> rated for 300 kilometers plus. Um, w is up to 270. Z is actually 240 plus, which is most of your production cars, uh, production sports cars, um, 240 kilometers an hour. Um, so BMWs and the such are limited at 155, so you wouldn't need more than a Z rated tire anymore. My uh, knowledge is a little dated, but isn't the Bugatti Veyron the only thing that actually goes over 300 kilometers per hour? Uh, I think the Chiron does as well now uh there's several bugattis i think there's a pagani that goes 300 plus i think there's a lycan uh which is a car made out of dubai that goes 300 plus hmm. um yeah veyron was the first production car that did it but then a lot of people tried to follow suit and succeeded of all the ones he just mentioned you could round up every one of them in the world and you wouldn't fill up a mall parking lot mm-hmm. so uh <laughs> yeah. right would they be just as, as sticky uh, if you get up towards W and would they be just as sticky? So that uh, usually has to do with compound rating. Right. Um, so I usually look at tread wear to tell me whether. Yeah, I usually look at the, the warranty basically yeah, to decide, okay, right. these are warrantied up to 20,000 miles. Those are nice and sticky. But... We, should, we should do <laughs> the thing about cars guide to tires. I mean, I think that there's some basic stuff out there that, that I don't know. And that the average user doesn't know in terms of how do you look at tread wear? What does that mean? What does all weather mean versus something else? If I live in Georgia, do I need snow tires? Or like the that. penny test. The, yeah, the penny test. People need to know mm-hmm. about penny tests. Um, maybe where, where if you get a nail in your tire, where is it that it can be patched? Or right. yeah, I'm sure we could do a whole episode at least on tires. On tires. All right, let's let's make that happen. Let's uh, let's get that together for okay. our next recording session. Um, so uh, a friend of mine wrote on my Facebook page, he says, and I can't remember who wrote this, so forgive me for, for forgetting, but he says, tachometers are stupid and a waste of space on the dashboard of an automatic transmission equipped vehicle. 
This I'm is... I'm grunting over here if it picked it up. I backed it up, but not quite soon <laughs> enough. Mm. Grr. <laughs> so so <laughs> I mean I know where this person's coming from, but I I kind of disagree. I kind of like having attack even on a an automatic. What do you guys think? Oh oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> like me, me. Oh, uh, oh Mr. Cutter. <laughs> exactly. Um <laughs> one thing that that it's always been big with me that I have to have a car with a tack just because it can be one of your first signs that there's a problem. Sure. Oh yeah. So when you're just kind of doing old school and you're not hooking up whatever computers or, or something to go to it, your tachometer, even being a little bit off, it, it can be your, your first warning sign. Something isn't quite right with your car. Especially with as quiet and vibrationless as a lot of modern cars are. Sometimes that's the only thing that'll tell you it's not running. Well, my Mustangs <laughs> have never really been quiet no. or vibrationless by or running. <laughs> um, that would be my Pontiac. Oh, you're right. I have Sorry never had that. a Mustang fail me. Ever. Right. And mine is it's a 20 years old. of a Mustang. God. <laughs> no, I, 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 I. Yeah. No. It's a lot of unicorns. Right. <laughs> I'm the unicorn whisperer. I don't know. Uh, so. Yeah. No, you need a tachometer. Well, you don't need one. But um, from a diagnostic point of view, tachometers tell you whether your transmission is sleep, uh, slipping. It'll tell you whether your transmission is failing if you don't have your next gear. Uh, if you want to do engine braking, assuming you don't have a CVT transmission and you just want to drop your gears to help you slow down in emergency situations, or if you just want to preserve your brakes a little bit, um, you'll know that you're not over revving your engine. Um, oh, yeah. There's there's a couple of valuable tidbits of information that a ta tachometer can give you. And, you know, I'm not the kind of guy that's like, oh, it has to be analog or it has to be digital. Like, I really don't care about that. But you just want the data. I need data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Data is very, very exactly. critical. Exactly. Exactly. I it mean, the, 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 the argument that I have here is that everyone here at this table is both a driver and a gearhead. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We like the data. I mourn the loss of a voltmeter on my dashboard. I, I want to see the oil temperature. I want to see the, the, the coolant temperature. Install some. And huh? Install some. I could install some, but why? Are, I mean, these things used to be like the car that I learned how to drive on, a good old Chevy Malibu Classic had mm -hmm. that information. The Chevy Malibu Classic was nothing. It wasn't even, it was just a family sedan and it still Standard. had that stuff in there. Yeah. Now your everyday family sedan barely has anything. I don't think most people know what to do with them. Right. So the average driver. So probably the, doesn't need a tech either, even yeah. though all of us find right. it useful. Yeah. Right. Well, I think I think this is a conversation that we heralded back to from a while ago, where manufacturers have started making cars so dummy-proof that it's just making our oh, yeah. average drivers dumber. Like mm -hmm. it's very well, painful. Well, yeah. like well, like the, the thing uh, with the gauges, yeah. uh, the Volkswagens I had, and these were Mark IV Golf variants. They had a temperature gauge, but you know what? Unless the engine was blowing up. That thing just sat in the middle. And they were so well damped because if it actually swung much and reflected anything accurately going on, the average consumer would freak out and think something's up with their car. Right. Well, see, and, 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 and modern cars are so reliable and idiot proof that we don't need it. <laughs> uh, I've I've had a car where the faster you go, you can watch the temperature gauge oh, go yeah. down because of the airflow just sure. from the speed. Yeah. So, but it was set yeah. up. Yeah, my 1993 240SX, which I had the worst time bleeding the coolant system out of, um, gave the slightest readings, you know, the fluctuation on the needle. It, it didn't give me the specific degree, but I can tell that the cooling system is working. And, you mm -hmm. know, I can see oh, that yeah. the thermostat opened and I could see when the fan clutch engaged. And, you know, it was just microscopic movements to let me know that it was actually reading a value rather than um, the gauge cluster was giving me erroneous readings from a bad ground or something along those lines. Right. And your thermostat can get stuck, and that's yeah. Oh, yeah. a really cheap little part that can cause lots of damage. So oh, yeah. definitely good information to have. Um, the oil pressure is one that gets me. I would rather have oil temperature over oil pressure because pretty much if that one goes down, you're in some pretty big trouble. But um, I would like oil temperature. I mean, there is the oil warning light. Like if your pressure drops out the bottom, the light does go on. Yes, but, but mm -hmm. all your oil has just fallen out of the car. And it's you should by know time, by the yeah. large banging noise. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the thing about oil temperature, though, unless you have a turbo, um, you're not going to overheat your oil 
if you overheat your oil on an, a naturally aspirated vehicle, something else is tremendously wrong. Well, mine, yeah. again, is just about the data and knowing about the environment of the car, how it's operating. Um, not necessarily that that it's it's going to make some huge impact on something. Right. <laughs> We're laughing because uh, I'm going to have to edit this out, but my phone just... In trying to position my phone so that everyone could read the countdown clock, uh, it buzzed because someone sent me a text message. Um, so, again, you know, we like the data. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to see standard gauges return. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yet but we really don't need them. But the rest of the world doesn't need them. No, most of us don't. Yeah. And most of us who like having the data don't need it. I didn't say everybody, but most yeah. of us. I've had a couple friends who said, well, the oil light only came on a few times, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So maybe some advance warning on that would have been useful. But, uh... <laughs> well, here's one for the manufacturers, something a little bit more specific, because right now the whole check engine or whatever little icon you have pop up is pretty much like the blue screen of death. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong with your car. Right. Um, thanks. Could you um... now some cars, my Pontiac, when it's running, you can actually press a button in a certain way and it'll give you its own code that it's it's throwing out so i mean even something like that i don't know can the, know. Can the general person even make use of it or do they all just drive dra straight to a garage anymore pretty much and say it went and made a funny noise <laughs> i don't know yeah i, I mean know. again it, i think a lot of problems stem from the lack of education in all these situations uh critical thinking isn't exactly a forte of the common folk in America, anywhere in the world, honestly, if you travel about, you know, critical thinking is one of those things that uh, seems to be a dying art or maybe, a, a, you know, a, an art that's being resuscitated thanks to uh, the millennial generation that's like, <laughs> that, that came up with an Area 51 raid in such a way that they said, uh, screw life, this sucks, we're going to raid Area 51 and find aliens. Um, uh, so maybe critical thinking is coming back around. Are you, are you going to the raid, Ronnie? Uh, I am listed as going to the raid, and I'm sure the FBI will be at my door any minute. Uh, it's going to be great. Um, not in it to clap alien cheeks, just uh, there to have some good times. Just want to mm. have some beer and listen to music. Hey, if there's a carpool, I will happily go to <laughs> I will happily go along uh, for the ride. There might be some hot bits in those saucers that'll make your car faster. Oh yeah, Ooh, <laughs> Goes... alien technology. Uh, the map they have. This, this is a bit of a tangent, but they have a little drawn-out map of Area 51 <laughs> by the creators, and there's like a UFO salvage yard, and then there's like a UFO hangar, and then there's the <laughs> it's like an alien bunker or something. I would go straight to the salvage yard and be like, alright, what can I put on my 240? Exactly. Right. <laughs> I know there's like a two-mile long runway there, and you know, that what a great drag strip that would be. Uh, man, yeah. can you imagine the kind of rubber we could, the kind of tires we could destroy in that Government hanging out, holding out on us, man. It's yeah. terrible. Right, right. Totally. Better than that eighth of a mile track we used to have way out in the boondocks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> eighth of a mile. Eighth of a mile. You can't even run something like a Mustang on that. You need the whole thing to stop. My car would probably only reach 30 miles an hour in that much space. Well, see, I could, <laughs> I could either get up really fast yeah. or stop safely. Right. There, there was no go really fast no and stop right. safely. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so are we saying tachometers are stupid and a waste of time? No. No, not at all. All right. Uh, more data, the better. Uh, data, better. Quick correction from what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, the, Bugatti, the Bugatti Veyron broke 400 kilometers an oh, hour, no not kidding. 300. Wow. Um, mm. And it's also erroneous to say that it was the first one because the first production vehicle that broke 400 kilometers an hour is the Callaway Sledgehammer back in 1988. Whoa. It's a modified and tuner version of a Chevrolet Corvette production car tested by Deutschmann Design at a transportation research center. And if you want to call the modified version, you know, as not counting, in 1993, the Dower 962 Le Mans uh, broke 404.6 kilometers an hour, which isn't as fast as the Veyron, but still broke yeah. 400 kilometers an hour in 1993. Uh, also in 1993, actually, no, sorry, that's 351 kilometers an hour. So, uh, yeah, there were a couple of cars that broke the 400 uh, kilometer an hour limit, which is 250-ish miles per hour. Crazy fast. Yes. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's nuts. All right. So this is actually a pretty good segue. You mentioned Corvette and the big news of the day 
of the last couple of days, in a matter of fact, is is the big news from Corvette, which is the well, 2020 C8 mid-engine. Yeah. Uh, See, I figure Ben was chomping at the uh, bed. I wasn't well, even going to say anything. <laughs> He's been so excited about this. Well, I don't know about excited. I just have been kind of keeping up with the developments as it's been. Um, Giddy sort of, like a schoolgirl. As it's been just forthcoming. Saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> forthcoming. Right. Right. So every author's favorite word. Uh, anyway, yeah. I mean, they've been pushing this thing for a while, kind of hyping it, kind of getting us all curious. I mean, the GM CEO herself even teased it a little bit a couple months ago. And finally, uh, a few nights ago, that, or, you know, two nights ago, something like that, they. Uh, they had this thing you could watch live online, and it was a little cheesy because they had two former astronauts who talked about space for 15 minutes before, you know, anything to do with cars. And even then, the, you know, space tie-in with the thing I thought was a little <laughs> corny, a little bit opportunistic since this is the anniversary week of Apollo 11. Right. But they finally showed us the car, and it's pretty cool. Uh, I would have done a couple things a little differently on it, but that's just my personal taste. Uh, it looks like it's pretty fabulous and one of the big news items with it is that the it's going to start below sixty thousand dollars in theory at least i take that with a grain of salt uh, fifty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine right. and even then to get one that's that basic and depackaged you'd probably have to special order it yeah i imagine average ones going to dealers are probably going to be 80 plus because they'll have certain trim packages and things like that no or, ac no radio yeah yeah <laughs> Well, they would include that into a track option, uh, kind of like uh, the Porsche 911 GT3. They right. would have a Corvette equivalent, and then they would charge even more for it. Right. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, well, I was thinking the Cobra R that came out back at uh, the beginning of the what people call the New Edge. And, it, yeah, no AC or anything, but the, the asterisk was not for right. street driving. But it's, hasn't Corvette come under a little bit of criticism for doing a mid-engine car? It's like... I think the criticism is along the lines of they're just trying to be like everyone else now building a supercar. Well, I don't think so, because this is something they've toyed with since at least the 1960s. Hmm. There have been several, several mid-engine Corvette prototypes over the years, and some of them came closer than others to consideration for production. But I think with the, the point they're at now is that they, they, they feel that the front-engine sports car has been developed as far as at least Chevrolet can develop it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they felt this was just sort of the the next logical step, and I'm pretty sure that the front engine one is going away with this. Hmm. There was some talk for a while; nobody knew was it going to be alongside or instead of or what. But uh, I think this is going to be the new one. Yeah. There's also talk that Corvette's going to become a separate brand. I don't know if that's really happening or not. I've heard that about Corvette and Mustang. Yeah, sure. Ah, uh, well, see, you know what though. Maybe we should design our own sports car then. If Chevy's throwing up their hands and saying these have been designed as, as far as they can go, we, we need to design a sports car. It's interesting because Ferrari a few years ago went back to a few front engine models after many years of not doing that. I think that's yeah. Ferrari's transition into developing something that's more practical for consumers. Could uh, be. Because Could be. I was speaking with uh, Porsche Engineering a number of months ago about, you know, how the direction of Porsche in general with motorsports. And they said, you know, when the Cayenne came out, everyone, or no, when the Boxster first came out, everyone threw up their hands and said, this isn't a real Porsche. This is ridiculous. Why would Porsche ever <laughs> produce something like this? It's cheap. Uh, it's looks like tiny. a fox squatting. It looks ugly. <laughs> right. But it was an amazing selling vehicle with a great profit margin that helped keep the company alive. And then they did the same thing with the Cayenne. Cayenne SUV came out. And all the Porsche fanatics said, oh, my God, what's this SUV doing in our lineup? We're a sports car manufacturer. I still what say that. World? Yeah. But the numbers kept Porsche alive. Like, if it wasn't for the Cayenne, the Macan, uh, the Boxster, and the Cayman, uh, Porsche may be bankrupt right now. Uh, and I think the same thing is kind of happening with a lot of manufacturers domestically. Ford is getting rid of all of their lineup instead of – except for the Mustang and uh, – the Mustang, their pickup trucks, and the Focus, I think? Um, I think it was pretty much they're going to keep trucks and and SUVs and the Mustang. I'm not sure if they're keeping any other I, non... I know they're whittling down their yes. roster yes. tremendously. I oh, think yeah. GM is starting to take realization that they should start be start oh. doing the same thing chrysler too that's something that my friend told me and i had not gone back out to research this and and you guys have laptops up maybe you can find something now there had been some talks 
according to my friend, okay, I had some some expletives to say, apparently there had been some talks between Ford and GM about some sort of, I hesitate to use the word merger. <laughs> I'll, I'll err over on collaboration because I, I don't like that idea. But he had mentioned that, that he had read a news story about a, a possible combining of Ford and GM. That would be my hell freezes over moment. <laughs> That's what a lot of people said about the Corvette, too. Well, I mean, <laughs> what? That they I would, doubt that they would do it, yeah. but I wouldn't rule it beyond possibility. <laughs> <laughs> but a merger between Ford and GM. I mean, that's like, you know, two major competitors. That's like Apollo Creed and Rocky Balboa getting together to beat, you know, know some sort of childhood yeah. disease or something. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to hop over. I know he tried yeah. to send me a link at one time, yeah. and I I was twitching enough at the thought, so I didn't click on the link. So I'm just going to see if I can find it. All right. So right. what we'll do is we'll wrap this episode, and uh, we'll do our research, and we'll come back for the next episode, and we'll start with that. All right. Okay. Great. So this has been The Thing About Cars. Thank you, as always, for joining us, recording at Strongbox West in Atlanta. Uh, please check out our Patreon and become our supporters. We're actually looking for... Um, a little more support via the Patreon channel. And there's a couple of interesting perks to be had if you donate to us via Patreon. And if you can think of ideas for better perks, please drop us a line and let us know. You can find us at thethingaboutcars.com. That's our webpage. Or on Facebook at The Thing About Cars. In the meantime, thanks again for joining us, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. All right, so this is how you win the Seal Skin Cover, courtesy of the Seal Skin Covers Company. Go to the Thing About Cars website. That's thethingaboutcars.com. There you should find a link to a blog post entitled, We're Giving Away a Seal Skin Cover. There you'll find a link to a form which you can use to enter. It doesn't matter what you drive or where you live. All you have to do is give us a name and a valid email address via that form. And while you're at it, we always appreciate your feedback about the show. One lucky listener will be selected at random to win their very own seal skin cover, courtesy of Warren Jobs and the Seal Skin Covers Company. Thanks, as always, for being a part of the Thing About Cars family. We'll see you soon. Thank you for listening. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>